What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Becky Lynch going away for a long time, two WWE superstars still haven't re-signed, a former WWE star blasts Triple H's booking, Roman Reigns working hard to come back, Jade Cargill not happy as tag team champion and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always we won't recap the show but just look at the good, the bad and the downright ugly. As always we start off with the good as number 1, Swerve vs Killswitch Banger. If AEW wanted to capitalize on fans who watched Double or Nothing tuning into Dynamite, they picked a fantastic match to get things started. Swerve Strickland vs Killswitch was an action-packed brawl and a logical follow-up to Swerve's recent match against Christian Cage. Showing Strickland getting revenge on Christian's enforcer by cutting off one of his dreadlocks was a reminder that Swerve is no pushover. Number 2, there's a new sheriff in town. It looks like the Elite isn't going to have a free reign in AEW now that AEW President Tony Khan has appointed Christopher Daniels as interim EVP to implement his wishes. This was a smart move because it keeps Tony Khan off TV and it adds some conflict to the AEW vs Elite storyline. While the heels are far from finished, AEW can't fall into the trap WCW did with the NWO, where they ran roughshod on WCW, making its wrestlers look like prized chumps and creating zero excitement for months of destroying WCW stars. Number 3, Mercedes Monet wrestles. Mercedes Monet wrestling twice in one week? Well, while it remains to be seen how often the new TBS champion will compete, this was a step in the right direction as AEW is paying her too much money for her to be a part time performer. Number 4, Joe mentoring Hook has promise. Is Samoa Joe taking Hook under his learning tree? Well, sounds good to us, as it could give Hook the final bit of momentum he needs to break out. Throw in the potential for a Joe Hook tag team and an inevitable breakup, and this storyline actually has some promise. Number 5, Killing Two Birds with One Segment. The last night's show features some unusually strong storytelling. Unusual in the sense that AEW stories have been all over the place lately, as see when Chris Statlander interrupted the Orange Cassidy Don Callis segment, only to lead into the big reveal that Trent Barretta joined Callis. There should never be a fixed number for matches, interviews and segments, nor a rule that says you can't address two storylines in one segment. Number 6, The End and the Beginning. Dynamite achieved much last night, giving fans a strong follow up to Double or Nothing while wasting no time setting things up for Forbidden Door. Number 7, Stockley and Statlander is a wise move. Chris Statlander is a wrestler who is in a tough spot as she's shown promise during her time in AEW, but she's also been stymied by two major injuries that have sapped her momentum. Now that AEW's women's division is finally improving, Statlander needs to make sure that she doesn't get lost in the crowd. One solution is pairing her with Stockley Hathaway, a great talker and a heat magnet who could turn her heel turn into something special. Statlander isn't a great talker, but she's no marble mouth either. Hopefully this pairing will get Statlander back on track as a solid upper card player and championship contender, and a worthy main event. The Forbidden Door Casino Gauntlet was a strong main event and one AEW needs to book weekly rather than occasionally. While many fans debate whether it's time for Will Ospreay to challenge for the AEW World Championship, the match itself was a good bookend for an overall good show. It was nothing bad, nothing downright ugly. This was one of the better Dynamites in recent memory. It almost seemed as if Tony Khan read the criticism about the current product resembling 2019 WWE and probably realized he needs to set things up. We don't care what the motivation was as long as we get better shows like this. What would you guys think of Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first story looks at Becky Lynch is going to be gone for a long time. The top of today's news is the question whether Becky Lynch is leaving the WWE. Fans are still asking since news broke that Lynch's WWE contract expires at the end of May and she's apparently in no rush to return. And now the Wrestling Observer Radio is adding to the intrigue with the following report. Becky Lynch is taking an extended leave. From what I was told it's not like a short period of time. She was looking for a long period of time out. It's probably if he's not on the road, Seth Rollins. It makes sense for her to not be on the road and they can't be hurting for money where they need it right now. And you know, maybe she's looking for other things or maybe she's not. She'll be a free agent as a couple of days from now. As Meltzer mentioned, the timing is right for Lynch to enjoy time with Seth Rollins as he recovers from his various injuries. In addition, Lynch may want to pursue other opportunities such as Hollywood. The man will likely be courted by AEW once her contract expires, but Ringside News discussed a recent appearance by AEW President Tony Khan on The Rich Eisen Show where he said he can't speak with Lynch yet as it would be contract tempering. As we noted earlier this week, Lynch will likely receive the biggest contract of any female wrestler currently working. Whether it happens in AEW or WWE remains to be seen. The WWE has the advantages of being where Lynch's husband works, a long time home and more stability than AEW. On the other hand, AEW could offer her more money and would give her fresh opponents to work with. 
when do you think we'll see Becky Lynch again? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, two WWE superstars still haven't re-signed. Becky Lynch isn't the only WWE female superstar whose contract is set to expire. Fightful Select reports veteran grappler Natalia hasn't signed a new deal. Meltzer weighed in during an episode of Wrestling Observer Radio saying, yeah, she hasn't signed a new deal. I don't know if that's anything to be alarmed over or anything like that, but that is the situation. While Natalia is no longer a main event player, her skills and veteran status make her an asset whether she competes in singles matches or tag team competition. If she chooses to do so, she would have no problem finding work outside the WWE. The WWE's usual habit of letting talent contracts expire has continued as Chad Gable's WWE deal is set to expire next week. This news comes courtesy of Fightful Select, who state that no deal has been reached and Gable is expected to get interest from across the industry. Fightful's report adds that they've heard that there'll be a strong push from talent in various outside companies to vouch for him to be signed. Gable is currently one of the top heels on Raw and it'd be a significant blow for WWE if Gable walks out the door. Next up, Adam Cole, AEW World Champion. There's interesting rumors from Fightful Select that AEW were considering putting the AEW World Heavyweight Championship on Adam Cole. The patron site recently reported there were plans for MJF and Adam Cole to wrestle in late 2023 and Adam Cole was considered for a possible title victory. However, Cole's injury set off a chain of events that are still felt today. Cole's injury sidelined AEW's original plans for the Cole vs MJF program which reportedly would have led to an earlier reveal of the devil's identity. Next up, a former WWE star blast Triple H's booking. Much like the former WWE superstar Ryback, the baddest woman on the planet never seems at a loss for words when complaining about the WWE. A new excerpt from her latest memoir, My Fight, shows Rousey's frustrations with the WWE and apparently Triple H's booking. Listen, I told you I'd be here until SummerSlam, I said, and I'm a woman of my word, but I'm done after this. All I wanted when I got into this business was to tag with Shayna, have her turn on me, then put her over before I leave. We have until SummerSlam to make that happen. After that, I'm done being associated with this minimum effort lazy ass shit show. I could feel my lip quivering as I was so worked up it took everything I had to hold back tears. He shook his head like someone who silently shared my frustration. Rousey also shared an exchange she had with Triple H that seemed to cast him in a favorable light. Okay, I get it, he said. I get it. I nodded, indicating I said my piece. I moved to leave when he stretched out his hand. I thought to shake mine. Instead, he leaned in, gently touching my arm. He dipped his head, looking up at me. His tone shifted from authority figure to friend. But how are you, he said sincerely. I burst into tears, not just crying, but bawling. I'm so tired, I said. I'm so tired that I feel like it's changing my personality. I'm so much more anxious, stressed, negative, like butter scraped over too much bread. Ronda Rousey's time in the WWE was apparently miserable, at least judging from Rousey's comments in her book and interviews promoting her book. What would you guys think of Rousey's take on WWE's booking? Do you think she was right criticizing Triple H? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Roman Reigns working hard to come back. But when will Roman Reigns return to WWE? The universe has been asking for Reigns ever since Solo Sokoa assumed control of the bloodline. Reigns, who was last seen at WrestleMania 40 when he dropped the WWE Undisputed Championship to Cody Rhodes, recently appeared in a training video uploaded by bodybuilder extraordinaire Kai Green. Green posted the following message with the clips of Roman in the gym training. Rise up, keep pushing, keep dreaming, and never let self-doubt or fear stop you. This is your journey. The pursuit of greatness is within grasp. All you have to do is go out there and earn it. Huge shout out to Roman Reigns for tagging me in on this training session. Does this mean that Roman is getting ready to return to the ring? It could be, but it also could be a sign of how devoted Roman is to training, whether it's for Hollywood or WWE. But speaking on his Hollywood venture, the filming for Good Fortune is about wrapping up. So could this mean that we see Reigns make an early return? Let us know in the comments down below. And finally, is Jade Cargill not happy about being tag team champion? And last but not least, how does Jade Cargill feel about being one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions? Cargill, who enjoyed an incredible undefeated streak in AEW as its TBS champion, might see a tag team title win as a step down. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. Cargill discussed her feelings during a chat with Title Sports Network, revealing, Amazing, it wasn't something that was in my cards or my deck. Came out the blue. But teaming with the EST, we're unstoppable. Who's gonna beat us? Well, let's really think about it right now. No one. No one. So we knew it was coming. We knew that, you know, we had phenomenal. The Kabuki Warriors are great. You know, they held the belts down, but it's our time. Akagil seems to be in the ideal position as she's getting plenty of TV time while also working alongside one of the industry's best. Perhaps she was looking for something bigger in the WWE, but the Women's Tag Team Championship seems like a good start. But there you have it folks, our look at Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below. I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.